In World War II, there are a lot of African Americans that went to foreign, foreign they soil sure to fight. Mm -hmm. They were fighting for freedoms in a foreign land that when they came home, they didn't enjoy themselves. Under that flag, with those veterans. So think about this. You go to Germany and you go overseas and you fight for freedom for people you have no idea, have nothing in common mm -hmm. with. And the very country that you're representing, when you come back to it, you're a second class citizen. Correct. Agreed. Me, Agreed. I have a very unique perspective mm -hmm. skill. Okay. I'm from rural South Georgia. You are. I'm 48 years old, Skip. And if I don't tell you my religion, you can't guess it. If you if I don't tell you my mom's name, you couldn't guess it. I was dirt poor, 12, 1,000 square feet, 10 people sometimes, mm -hmm. cement floors, 10 roof. I'm well off now. The one thing that I've been for 48 years mm -hmm. is black. That's what you see. You don't see my religion. Mm -hmm. You don't see my orientation. You don't know my political affiliation. But you see this. I see people get on shows and the officers say non-compliance. Well, I saw a guy in Florida, a white guy, stab two people, mm -hmm. kill him, stabbed another guy, was eating the guy's face. Female officer tase him. They have to wait 10, 15 minutes, and they take him alive. I see a guy selling CDs, and he's killed. I see a guy selling loose leaf cigarettes, mm -hmm. and he's killed. See, that's what gets us up in arms. I should. Because you say non-compliance is a death sentence. If a man is gnawing a man's face after he's killed two people, mm -hmm. we see what happened in Colorado. The guy killed 12, and they take him alive. We see what happened in, in, in North Char in Charleston. What a, uh, uh, nine parishioners, he drives. Not only do they take him alive, they take him by Burger King because he's hungry. So you think we're supposed to be okay with this? No. In what system? How do we solve it? Skip, there's a huge, we got to start with us. Because this black-on-black -black gun violence, see, I believe you can work, you know, and, and it, what bothers me a lot of times is that when we say, you know, the police brutality and the first thing everybody, what about Chicago? What about black-on-black -black crime? It is. It's reached epi epidemic proportion. If you take away a person's hope, they will resort to drastic measures by any means necessary to climb up. They will destroy themselves in their own community mm -hmm. because that's close proximity. A very good friend of mine, and I hope we can have him on, Michael Eric Dyson, he says, people kill in close proximity to where they are. Blacks kill blacks, white kills blacks, so forth and so on. So unless you got an integrated community, then and only then can you get apples, apples and apples and oranges and oranges. How, Skip, how do you, we solve that? You got, how do we, we, we got to get we educated. Fix that? We got to get educated, Skip. Our education system in our communities is not good. We got to, we got to get guys employed. We got to get people employed, Skip. Because guy, if you don't have money and you want something nice, either I, I got one or two ways. I sell drugs or I go steal it or I go take it. Those are my two options because I see. <laughs> Rolexes, and I see Mercedes, and I see nice things, and I want them. But I don't have a job, and I don't have mm. opportunity and means to get it. So if I want it, I'm going to go get it. We we, we got to do a better job. It's going it's to start with us. I'm not going to put the onus on white America because I know there are some things we can do. I'm not saying treat me different. Don't give me a hand out because I'm black, but don't deny me because I'm black mm. either. If we're going to be fair about this, if I'm equally as educated as my white counterpart... Hey, why didn't I get the job? I need to know why I didn't get the job. Don't say because, you know, <laughs> affirmative action. I get into it sometime on Twitter with like, well, let's do away with affirmative action. I said, okay, I'm all for it. If you don't want to give me a job because I'm black, don't deny me because I'm black. Mm -hmm. Skip, this goes back 400 years. We're not going to solve it in one year. We're not going to solve it in two years. But the first step, of race relationships in this country, we got to acknowledge that it exists. Stop sweeping it under the rug and say that it doesn't exist. It's, it's a figment of my imagination. It happened. It happened. It goes back to slavery. I mean, think about it, Skip. We really didn't have the legitimate right to vote until 1964 in this country. They had the Declaration of Independence in the 1770s. And then you had the Civil War in 1865. 
So think about it, 200 years after the Constitution, we earned the right to vote. Mm -hmm. And we think all of a sudden everything's going to be okay? No. There's 200, 300, 400 years of frustration that's built up. Have we made any progress since 1964? Yes. I'm not going to judge a man by where he is. They say, that's what the saying is. They say you never judge a man by where he is because you don't know how far he's come. John Lewis, who's from my, where I formerly reside in Atlanta, he says, guys, if you think it's bad, you have no idea what it was like in the 50s and the 60s. He almost lost his life. It's better. We've come a long way, Skip, but we got a long way to go. I agree. We got a long way to go. I want you to know Michael Eric Dyson, also a close friend of mine. Yes. We will have him on this yes. show. And all I can do is to continue this conversation on this show. I am open to doing, saying, moving anything to try to help fix this in my own tiny little white guy way. Whatever I can do, show me, direct me, and I will do it. Because... But don't tell me it's a figment of my imagination. No. And when we grieve, don't tell us... No. Listen, don't tell us what to grieve for, and don't tell us how long we should grieve. Oh, slavery happened. You... Oh, what? And, and I was like, hold on, wait a minute. It happened, it existed. I said, I've never heard a person tell a Jewish person the Holocaust. You weren't in the Holocaust. Your mom, mm. they don't say that, but they tell, oh, you black, get over slavery. Mm. Your, your mom wasn't in slavery. You weren't a slave. No, hear me. I'm trying to have a conversation because this is what will happen. The peaceful protest will try a peaceful route, like Colin Kaepernick sitting down or taking a knee. And then when you won't listen, we'll make you hear us. You have a Ferguson, you have a Baltimore, or you have a Watts in the 60s, you or, don't want or that. A Dallas. Yes, you don't want that. Listen, let's talk. We can have intelligence, mm -hmm. but believe it's real. It is real in black America's mind that we are disproportionately treated unfairly. Mm -hmm. You can't say, well, look at you, Shannon. Look, you play in the NFL and Colin Kaepernick. <clears throat> you can't say one. You can't take athletes and entertainers and say, well, that's what black America is because it's not. More of us are unemployed, undereducated, lack health care, lack equal housing. That's real in America. So unless we, America, believe that it is real and when you hear people talk about it, listen to them, it's only going to get worse, Skip.